Unleash is is back. Unleash is different. Unle- and keep an eye because what what we've got up there now, while it may look different and may look, we've got had a lot of really encouraging feedback. Um, we're uh, we've got a lot of really cool plans, and uh, so keep an eye on on Unleash. Welcome to WTF 2020 on how to pivot in the COVID-19 shit show. I'm your host on the Total Picture Podcast, Peter Clayton, and joining me today is the new Senior Vice President of Insights at Unleash, George LaRoe. George has a long and distinguished career in HR and TA tech, and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to catch up with him. It's, you know, it's no secret that I've been a huge fan of Unleash since attending their event in San Francisco in 2017. You know, what a ballsy move for this little known European company to make. San Francisco, the most expensive place you could possibly ever think about putting on an event at the Fort Mason Center for the Arts and Culture on the waterfront with beautiful views of the Golden Gate Bridge. And seriously, I mean, who else in HR tech would have the imagination and the inspiration and the balls to do this. I mean, you can see one of their mascots, Nancy, sitting um, on the top of my applause sign back there. And so, you know, that's why I was so happy and encouraged in this shit storm of 2020 when the email from Unleash CEO and founder Mark Coleman hit my inbox that after many months, Unleash had been reinvented to become the new, quote, customer first digital media platform for the HR industry and announcing are my friend George LaRoque as the company's new Senior Vice President of Insights. So George, welcome. It's great to see you. How are you and how's your family? Well, thank you for that amazing introduction, (laughs) Uh, Peter. It's good to see you. Um, It's good to uh, reconnect with you and connect with you here. Um, I'm doing doing good. I'm I'm doing doing well. The family's doing well, Um, you know, as well as can be. you know, as you so aptly called it uh, in the title here in this, you know, shit show in 2020, it's quite a yeah. year. So I would say, uh, you know, we're all hanging in there as well as anyone. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, surprisingly busy and, you know, do, doing, doing, we keep on keeping on, as they say. Yeah. Well, you know, I would guess that most of the people watching or listening to this know who you are, but can you please just tell us a, a little bit about your professional background? Sure. Uh, so I've been in the industry, the HR and HR technology um, world for, gosh, it's 30 years uh, now, uh, plus maybe plus one or two, but I'll just keep it at 30. Um, I spent 10 years as a practitioner. I came through the recruiting and staffing world and then moved on to the employer side and uh, had uh, created what would now be called a a recruitment process outsourcing firm in the Boston area at the time when the internet was really emerging and companies were moving their their recruitment to the web. So uh, we had fledgling partners in that business, like a a little shop called the monster board, which, you know, became right. monster. And, um, and then after 10 years on that, in that world, I moved to the tech provider side. So I launched a few of the bigger brands in the space. Um, uh, I was employee number 10 or 11 at Brass Ring, which is now, you know, part of IBM. Right. Uh, I took um, Bullhorn through uh, their first big venture capital round and, and initial growth and spent uh, time in the uh, talent management space with Deploy and uh, what is now uh, telemetry. I ran telemetry, which is uh, be when it was called Higher Desk. Now it's part of Jobvite. So I spent, had a few good runs uh, there. And for the last 10 years or so, uh, I have been a advisor and market analyst. So uh, helping uh, employers and technologists understand each other through research and experience. So, uh, have produced a lot of reports and content and, um, uh, do have done a lot of consulting, which wouldn't be visible, but working with helping people understand the tech trends and helping the people who are developing the tech understand their, their customers. And now 
uh, you know, in the last couple of months uh, here, the, the new thing, the new chapter is uh, coming on board and Unleash as the uh, SVP of Insights. Once I realized back in, you know, February, March, that there would be no live events this year and I would have to completely reinvent my business model <laughs> and become a, a Zoom magician, I, I was thinking, what are the conference, trade show and event companies like Unleash going to do? Uh, what was your reaction earlier this year, George? And and what what were you hearing from HR tech companies? Well, I, I think uh, you know even the events companies had that initial reaction. <laughs> Same yeah. one you did. Yeah. What, the what, hell? Are, what are we going to do? Uh, so um, you know that's as, as honest as I can be about it. I, I so my um, you know when this started happening, I was. Uh, working with Unleash in more of an advisory capacity. Um, and so I was there uh, while, uh, while COVID was, you know, coming through Europe and starting to really emerge in the U.S. And, you know, my initial, re my personal initial reaction, you know, it seems like so long ago, but it was just, uh, you know, I know. Mar February, March. Like everyone, I was thinking, oh, maybe this summer will be okay. Definitely by the fall. I think by the fall, right? By the fall. Right. But, right. you know, the CEO, uh, Mark Coleman, um, not an epidemiologist, uh, not an economist, but uh, based on uh, experience globally through other financial crises and, um, you know, small epidemics, which, you know, are a big thing, but smaller than a pandemic, <laughs> um, you know, had said, it's either going to be, if it's not the virus, it's the economic issues that are going to uh, bring the events industry, not in our, not just in our space, but just everywhere to its knees. And, um, you know, he said, it's, it's time to realize the vision that we've had for Unleash and it's time to change the business. So he was, I, I saw that and um, and we'll, I know we'll talk about what that meant and how we went through that. Mm -hmm. um, but he was probably the most prescient of all of the the uh, the folks that I was talking to. Um, what I've what I've seen across the board, you asked about HR tech, uh, is this isn't the same for anyone, right? It's it's not this experience, whether it's for a business or uh, an employee or a family, it's it's different for everyone. So uh, there are companies, like if you look at, you know, look at Amazon, they've done incredibly well because they were, uh, you know, not that they're taking advantage of it, but, but a business that delivers products, everything from groceries to anything right. uh, to your door was, was positioned to do well. Uh, there were HR tech vendors that were and are, positioned to do well. Uh, so video interviewing, digital interviewing, um, any, any systems that were helping you really communicate and listen with employees and get a sense of where they are and how they're doing, um, we're, we're positioned to do well. I've also seen another, um, in, the other factor for HR technology companies is uh, two types are doing well. The first I just mentioned, those are, that had a product or a service or positioned well in this space. They might have been supporting um, uh, an industry that was uh, filled with essential workers, right? So they, they saw demand go up because those companies needed to staff up, hire, train, manage, listen, you know, uh, provide for their employees. The other would be firms that had enough brand identity, momentum, customer traction, and were well managed financially to weather the storm. So you really learned quickly who was just burning cash mm -hmm. and who was managing it. Uh, so it's, you know, I, I've seen everything from uh, knee jerk reactions where, um, you know, with layoffs and um, uh, just really, you know, really difficult conversations with with CEOs and founders to the surprise that companies are doing well. So it's it's not and, and everything in between. And, and and that's the same as I as I speak to people in my community. Right. Um, you know, there are, you know, every dark cloud has a silver lining. And so some are living in the silver lining and some are living in the cloud. 
Yeah, I agree. And you know, I, I, um, I talked to Jer- Jerome Turnick yesterday with Smart Recruiters, and you know what? A, what a remarkable story that company has, you yeah. know, and how through their leadership and vision they have been able to weather this. Not only weather the storm, but you know they had their best quarter ever <laughs> this yeah. year in the middle of a pandemic, and right. they didn't lay off anyone. They didn't furlough anyone. Um, you know, so so there are those really positive stories out there. Yeah. Yeah, there are. There are. And, uh, you know, Jerome and, and smart recruiters, what um, they, they've always had a culture that, um, uh, you know, just had a, a bigger purpose than, you know, That's just true. providing technology. And I think that, uh, you know, before this situation that we're all living through, you would see it in um, programs that they would bring to market um, and and now you really see a company like that with their how that relates to their culture internally. When you talk to Jerome or to uh, their um, employees, I, I think it's um, it's also you know I had talked to the um, uh, CEO of uh, Namely uh, early on in this mm-hmm. um, Larry Donovan who had come from right. uh, Ceridian, and you know, he had a different kind of story, you know, there, they built that brand on um, small to medium sized businesses. And that, that's mm-hmm. the segment that they focused on. Um, and uh, so when your most HR tech products are licensed by number of employees, so that regard, you know, regardless of where you are in your subscription contract, you know, halfway in or, or near the end or at the beginning, when you go through an event where your employee size is reduced by 50% or, or sometimes even more, um, you start looking at your contracts and you start looking at the vendors that, that where that's the throttle. Uh, and, you know, he was really open um, about, um, about the fact that, you know, culturally they managed through that, they, being there with their customers to support them through this. They didn't take any draconian measures uh, with their customers. And um, they'd be an example of someone who, you know, they had customers who all, were also thriving, um, but uh, they were clearly managing the business and, you know, their their uh, their finances and their customer relationships in a way where you could tell they were, they were really managing well through this. And others have had great quarters, like um, Beamery is another one that uh, put out a press release about how, uh, they had their best quarter ever, and they're sort of poised to do that again. They're in recruitment marketing, as mm-hmm. as you know. So yeah, it's 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 mm-hmm. all over the place. In this, yeah, in, it really in this is market. Yeah. So so George, give us some uh, SVP insights here. How did this <laughs> new reinvention of Unleash and and your senior leadership role evolve over the last few months? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, for a while, it was the best kept secret um, out. You know, I, I was really, you know, working so hard on this with Mark and the team. Um, and other than the team, nobody knew that this had happened until the launch. Right. Right. Um, but to the evolution of it goes back. Um, well, it, I guess it could go back years where I had attended Unleash events and spoken at Unleash events. Um, and started to build a relationship with Mark and the team. But really, if you look over just over a year ago, that's where um, while the company was still focused on events, um, I had developed a partnership where if you attended uh, the the big Paris event, um, the H, um, Unleash World last year, you could have up-leveled your ticket and received a tour uh, from myself with uh, my partner, Madeline Lorano, uh, Aptitude Research is a firm that I d- have done a lot of work with. Mm-hmm. And we had three or four tours and we curated the tours based on the trends and, and that went really well. And through working together on that, um, then uh, Mark was looking to revamp the America event in Vegas. So um, he asked me to become the event director. Um, that was a again, a contractual kind of relationship. I was re- really part of the team, but uh, we were, I was handling the content strategy there. The uh, We had revamped the format of the event and really everything about the event. It was going to be, um, 
a really unique experience when you walked in the door it was it was going to be something unlike you had you had seen in this space never happened even yeah. though it was going really well um never happened but because of covid but um you know, the story I had told you about Mark being, you know, having the foresight around uh-huh. what's happening. when COVID hit, you know, to be really transparent, I thought, okay, just like, just like your thought, I thought, okay, I have a really good relationship with Unleash and um, I'm going to help uh, however I can. And I, you know, Mark's a good, a dear friend, uh, but boy, with an events business, I don't expect I'll be spending a lot of time here. And then when Mark started talking to me about this pivot, he asked me to stay on board to help with the content, the transition to becoming mm-hmm. more of a media business, because a lot of my world is content driven. Right. And so I did that. And over the period of uh, a month or so, uh, we talked about stepping up and, 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 and becoming a part of the team and bringing HR wins uh, with me. And so, um, so then it happened. So that was just maybe, Maybe those conversations were happening, you know, 11 or 12 weeks ago about, you know, just getting more, you know, engaged. And then just two months ago, um, jumped in and the, the, the deal happened. Right. So very quietly, um, uh, we worked very hard on establishing uh, the content plan, the, the schedule, uh, building out the team, uh, reorganizing the business around, you know, this model. Uh, building and launching the the site. Um, And it wasn't, you know, I mean, I'm responsible for all of the content, all of the the strategy, the, oh, the editorial, the, uh, as, as we start to look at more, some more strategic offerings next year, I'm driving that. Uh, So I've hired editors and so forth. And we're, uh, yeah, we're off to off, off to market, but it was, like I said, it was a well-kept secret until that email went out. Yeah. Now, well, speaking about HR wins now, is that, you know, that's still uh, alive as we speak. Is that going to get uh, woven into the Unleash platform? Yeah, that's, yeah, that brand is uh, becoming an Unleash brand. Um, I, you know, this was just, um, you know, the announcement's just two months old and uh, didn't want to uh, turn, flip one switch and turn the other one off. Uh, there are customers and subscribers. So uh, really the experience of HR wins, any customers there are really experiencing the same thing at a larger scale. Mm-hmm. So my um, my focus at HR wins the last few years has been on scale and looking to grow and and um, and you know it's it's another one of those silver linings uh, for me uh, where, uh, you know, this opportunity came up and overnight, you know, I've got a, now I've got a large team and the community and resources of Unleash to, to drive this new model forward. Um, I had always, you know, through the partnership looked long-term and, 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 you know, I had no, my focus was on building my business out, but I, I, I did in the back of my mind think, you know, this is, I'm very comfortable here and this is going mm-hmm. really well. I, and there was so much synergy. Um, not that I hate that word. <laughs> I can't believe I just used that word, but uh, we fit well uh, right. together. Right. There's, uh, there's really, um, we, you know, we augment each other well and uh, bring some, I bring, you know, what, what HR wins brings for strengths to unleash um, Unleash just amplifies with their strengths. Part of your LinkedIn profile, George, lists event director of Unleash North America as part of your responsibilities. And, and on the Unleash website, when you click on live events, um, mm-hmm. we have listed Unleash Europe, March of 2021, in London, Unleash America in May of 2021 in Las Vegas, and Unleash World in October of 2021. In Paris, do you think any of these events will actually take place? So the that event director role would be like if that was it's a LinkedIn profile, so uh, it it should be closed off. Uh, but <laughs> my, what what I what I'll tell you is this: um, uh, Unleash uh, Mark uh, and the team are actively engaged mm-hmm. with uh, the venue partners and all of the partners um, and. Yeah, these are large scale events that that um, that that Unleash runs. Right. 
So, you know, it's last year we had over 10,000 people attend Unleash events and, and it's the largest event in Europe and the, I think the fastest growing, um, uh, you know, what was the fastest growing event. In, yeah, I mean, that's uh, the otherwise. other thing about this, George. I mean, Unleash was really taking off, Yeah. right? Yeah. Up until yeah. February of this year. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, in order to run a large scale event and do it effectively for the audience and the kind of experience that Unleash provides, um, uh, you you need a, 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 a good amount of lead time. And in order to provide, you know, the experience for the sponsors and the tech providers who who come to the event as well and support the event. So, um, you know, Unleashed is a, if you look at what we're doing, we're bringing that experience, that, that, that customer first, that practitioner first, uh, leader first experience um, to the digital world. Think about it as our, how we're engaging the community. We chose not to throw everything into a, you know, virtual, you know, two days of, of content we saw the market going that way and 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 we could already see even a couple quarters ago when this all started exhaustion starting in the market for for that that much content in the, for this kind of experience yeah i um, agree it yeah. doesn't work you know yep. you can't you can't replicate a live event virtually i mean you just can't i mean i think some of these folks have done a very good job of scaling down their events um, and so, and, and making them bite size. So it's like an hour or maybe two hours, but you, you can't expect people to sit eight or nine hours, you know, on zoom every day <laughs> for three days, and, right. you know, right. without like passing out. Right. Right. And, and so, you know, thinking about that community and that, you know, to, I want to make sure I really answer your question, um, that, we're we're bringing that community online and and giving and and we've created all of these different formats which we're just really rolling out to engage them when though when we are able to deliver on our promise uh we'll be there i mean mark mm -hmm. can't he can't he you know mark uh, uh he yeah. can't he can't wait to be you know with his people live and in person um but, you know, as I said earlier, he's not an epidemiologist, neither am I. I can't, I, I, you know, it's hard, we can't, we can't predict when, you know, Paris will, will open up, but we just continue to work with their guidance and continue to work with all of our sponsors in the community to right. make sure that we are, um, you know, that we will be there and, and we will, nobody, nobody puts that type of event on like Unleashed does. That's right. And that'll happen. Uh, it'll happen again. But for now, um, we're, you know, for now for, you know, period, we are a, a media business and the business has really pivoted. So as we move forward, you'll view us as that community and, uh, and uh, the leading HR and work focused media business with the best events in the world when we're able to able to put them on. Bringing up your partners and, and the vendors, I mean, traditionally, the way these folks have always done lead gen and connected with prospects and their clients and, and doing all that kind of stuff is is through a you know the live events like Unleash. So are, are you working with your partners now to help them sort of pivot to your platform as a way of promoting their businesses and services? Yeah, that's actively happening. And we they've all stayed with us, which is fantastic. We've got a, you know, you'll see a number of... Um, well, so, some things you will not see because we're, again, we have this community and we're uh, creating some experiences with, with uh, leaders in HR that will happen virtually, but they'll happen off offline. And then what you'll see is our representation of that as we capture that experience uh, and bring it to the market. So, you know, think ins, think tanks, round table mm -hmm. type experiences. You'll also see a series of uh, webinars, uh, webcasts, 
um, that will hit the market <clears throat> starting in just a couple of weeks uh, that are some are uh, native to Unleash and, and many of them have uh, sponsors attached that. Um, and the real key thing here is that all of this uh, aligns with the kind of focus that Unleash had in, in the event space. So what I mean by that is the if you attended an Unleash event, the thing you appreciated was uh, it was the vendors were there because we actually delivered on the, you know, bringing the leaders into the room to engage in thought provoking content where they, they learned something um, because they were learning from each other. So the stage was 90% plus filled with their peers. So mm -hmm. I, I remember the first time I ran a track at Unleash, which meant I stayed in the room all day and introduced the speakers and engaged with them. And, and uh, the, the caliber of the people on the stage one at a time in that room was like nothing. I see HROs from every industry. I'm not exaggerating. And then as I would go around the room and help with the questions, the people asking the questions were CHROs from glo you know global businesses, every industry. That's not that's that was not my experience at other events, and uh, so that kind of exclusivity and that kind of curation for those leaders is what we're providing, and the ability to add to that conversation in the digital world is greater, and the ability for us to provide the same kind of experience for those sponsors is, 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 you know, I think it's even greater than the events world. Um, but uh, we're, you know, we're off and running and so far, you know, so far so good. We're, we're really pleased with, with the launch. That's great. Uh, so I recently watched your interview with Joe Publica, the SAP success factors president, which uh, yeah. was great. A nice get, as they say in the video <laughs> podcast biz, so are you going to be doing more of these types of interviews, George? Yeah, yeah, we've got, um, you know, we have uh, videos in an area that we're we're really focused on, as you know, that, you know, it's... Uh, Video rules, man. It, it really rules. does, yeah. it really does. Uh, and so we're, uh, that interview format, that uh, leader, you know, one-on-one -on -one big interview uh, is something we'll do more of, we'll do... Uh, shorter form videos. We've got uh, video-based product spotlights. Um, uh, we have um, docu series that are that are actually in production now. Uh, we have um, a series uh, of videos with um, Stephen Fry, who is like the most loved mm -hmm. human being in the UK. And in, on any given day, they 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 pull the the that country. Um, so it's, uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of video and a, a lot of different formats and angles that we're taking with that. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the launch video with Stephen Fry is really a, a, amazing. And I will, um, I'll put a link in the show notes to that video, which I, I found, you know, and this is what I do for a living. And I was really impressed with that. Cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, good. I, uh, yeah, it was, th that's... Um, you know, that that's unleash, you know, that's, that's yeah. un unleash for sure. So, so George, what has inspired you over the past eight or nine months? What's really inspired me is just uh, re the resilience that I find, you know, not just it's, it's in the day-to-day -day, um, stuff, like, you know, have, having calls, having conversations with people like you, we're all going through this. And, um, you know, as much as this remote thing has kept us apart, um, it's really uh, equalized us. It's really, uh, it's, it's really made me um, understand when I talk to some another parent that we're going through the same things. Mm -hmm. When I talk to another um, entrepreneur, we're, we're, we're going through the same, the same things. And, um, and it's listening to the stories about how people are stepping up to that, uh, and how they're, um, you know, dealing with that, uh, the human aspect of it, that, that kind of resilience, um, not the business kind of res <laughs> resilience. Right. That's really, really, um, I think, you know, had stopped me in my tracks a couple of times, mm -hmm. um, for sure. What, if anything, would you like to share with our viewers that we haven't discussed? 
Well, you did a great job. You did a lot of uh, research uh, coming into this. I was impressed with the, the questions. Um, so I, I don't know that we left anything um, off the table, but uh, I would just say, um, you know, that Unleash is, um, is back. Unleash is different. Unle and keep an eye because what, what we've got up there now, while it may look different and may look, we've got had a lot of really encouraging feedback. Um, we're, uh, we've got a lot of really cool plans. And uh, so keep an eye on, on, on Leash. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the new site's dynamite. You guys done a fa fabulous job. Thank you. Thank um, you. So how can our uh, viewers and listeners connect with you, George? What's the best way? Well, you can, uh, you know, the website is unleashgroup.io. Uh, I, I'm personally on Twitter at um, G Laroque, G L A R O C Q U E. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, and uh, I'm happy to connect there. And uh, at, unlink at LinkedIn, you'll find email and every everything else. Hey, it's Peter Clayton. Please hang on for just a minute. Like most of you, my business was completely upended by COVID-19. Instead of filming marketing, sales, testimonial, and product demo videos at conferences and corporate offices, I'm living on Zoom. Zoom can be an effective video tool for many kinds of powerful content. As people have become more comfortable being on camera and upgrading their video streaming capabilities, we are now able to create high-quality, entertaining, and informative videos using the Zoom platform. Virtual meetings, customer testimonials, product demos, marketing pitches. You'll be amazed at the video quality and the amount of sophistication and graphic complexity we're able to create. For a free consultation on how you can use video to market and promote your business, send me an email, peter at totalpicture.com and check out totalpicture.com forward slash work. I look forward to hearing from you and thanks for tuning in.